Hey everybody, what's going on? Buddy Blackford here with another After Effects CS6 tutorial, and I want to show you how to randomize your text effects with the uh, wiggly selector. So what I mean is, I've got this uh, text here, and um, it's just flying down, and I've got the uh, per character 3D enabled. If you don't know what that is, I did recently just make a tutorial right before this about that, and you can check that out on uh, the New Boston's YouTube page. So what we've got here is just some text flying, and I'll put it in the uh, custom view so you can see what's going on. So basically, some just some text flying on uh, onto the screen in the uh, Z space and in the Y space. Let me go to the active camera here, and we want to make this a little bit more randomized, and we don't want them to all come from the top and just fly down we want each letter to come from like random areas well sometimes your client might ask you to do that and you gotta do it and you gotta figure out how but how do you do it you add the wiggly selector or yeah you just gotta add that so let's uh, go to the selector here right here by clicking add if you twirl down in your text here I'll start from the beginning twirl down in your text here and you'll have this animator section and it has the add button next to it so click on add go to selector and click on wiggly now you've got the wiggly selector and your range selector in there already so right now when I add the wiggly selector you can see it just like flies around like this and then comes back into where it, where it is well um, first of all we wanted to start all these off the screen and we wanted to like have them fly in not just fly around on the screen where people could see them already so what we're gonna have to do is change the position here of the wiggly selector so let's uh, change these to make it so it's more uh, more off the screen here so this is Z so that's not gonna help that much let's change the X and if we can get it so pretty much everything's off the screen, that's good. So we've got one letter here, and I'll turn off the motion blur. We've got one letter here that's still in the middle. So what we want to do when something like this happens, come down to our wiggly selector and twirl down. We've got this random seed right here. And what we can do is change the seed. What the random seed is, is um, pretty much every time you use the wiggly selector it, it has a bunch of different uh, preset um, what they're called as random seeds and the letters will move in a different way based on what number seed you have so if I push one it's going to set the letters up in a different way so we need to find one that does not have them in the middle or one that we can um, get the letters close to the side so we can take them off of the screen so the L is pretty close here so we can probably take that off by moving one of our positions here and there we go so now everything's off the screen and you can see now that's way all over the place which is okay because then it'll fly in later when we uh... let's ramp preview it and see what happens Now they're just flying in from all over the place. Now if I put my motion blur back on to make it look a little more realistic. Now maybe that's what your client wanted right there. So the wiggler here, the wiggly selector here is very random and so I can't really, I can explain what some of these do but they're not always going to be do the same exact thing every time. So we've got our modes here first. The modes, um, let me come into the middle, will affect how the wiggly se selector uh, interacts with the uh, selector that's above it. So this, in this instance, it's going to um, be the position was what I selected for the range selector here so if I change it to add it's going to interact in a different way 
and this is probably not what we wanted. So in this one, it's just flying around. Subtract, we can see what that does. And subtract you might want to use. They're flying in from all over the place and not really like hang around, hanging around on the screen as much. So that would have been a good one to use for this. It's all about experimenting with the wiggly selector. And then, I mean, you can check out these other ones to see what they they do at some point. I mean, this one, the max doesn't have the letters stay on, so if you wanted that kind of effect, that's how you would go for that. You've got the max amount here and the minimum amount, which is pretty much like the offset in the range selector. And if I change these, the um, amount that the words are going to fly around on the screen are going to be lessened if I will uh, lessen the amount as you can see here by the uh, you can see how the box now if I maybe I can move back if I lower these the box is going to get smaller and it lessens the area that they're going to fly around in so I put those at a higher uh, range they're going to fly around even more so now the box that they're flying around in is even bigger and then this based on characters is the same as the one in the range selector so you can base it on words, lines of text, or uh, characters without their spaces. We got wiggles per second, which means uh, pretty much how uh, random and how fast it's going to uh, wiggle around and be random. So if I increase this to maybe 10, they're gonna go even more crazier. So I'll do a, I'll save it real quick and then do a ramp preview. So we can see what this looks like. A lot more stuff is going on, so it's uh, taking a little bit longer to render. So there you can see how they're like really, really flying around right now. So that's what the uh, wiggles per second does. This was at two before. The correlation property here determines if all the uh, characters are wiggled the same or if they're wiggled it like different separate from each other so if I put this at a hundred percent they're all going to do the same exact kind of um, wiggle motion so if you if you watch this text box you'll see that they're all still grouped together and they're all flying around together basically until they fly onto the screen on their own so they'll all be grouped together and if I set it to zero, they're going to do totally different things than um, what they, they're totally different movement from each other. So at 50%, it kind of does like a half and half, obviously, which is fine for here. The temporal phase here is like movement over time. So if I scrub through that, it's kind of like um, evolution if you've seen that in, in other effects and uh, the spatial phase here is through space so it's just kind of more of another way to randomize by using these and they're keyframeable so things the next one is uh, lock dimensions and uh, that's pretty useful when you're like doing scale so that the um, X and Y will scale at the same time instead of really stretching out the uh, the letters and everything like that. So if I turn it on for position, it's going to have them move in like kind of like the same type of way. It's, it's they'll move different, but um, they're not. It's not as random. So that's a uh, lock dimensions, and I've talked about the random seed earlier where it'll just change the starting points and of the uh, it'll change the starting points of your characters while they're when they're flying around and how they move around on this on the screen so this this really randomizes what's going on so you can if you have two sets of letters and you have them on the same and they're the same things and you have them on the same random seed then they're gonna do the exact same thing so you might want to change up uh, the random seeds for each of those texts so that you don't 
have the exact same animation going on. So that's how you use the uh, wiggly selector and all of its uh, character or properties here. And now you can be more of a pro at using this. Use it when you want to randomize things and learn how to reel in your letters so that it uh, works correctly and isn't just a bunch of mumbo jumbo on your screen. So thanks for watching this tutorial. I appreciate it when you guys leave comments and upvote, downvote. I mean, it's thumbs up and thumbs down on YouTube, I guess. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.